So in this problem, we have that Ernesto solves the equation below by first squaring both sides of the equation. And so let's rewrite the equation. But what we can expect is to find an extraneous solution here. Since notice that our square root is equal to a negative number, but this square root notation signifies that we're looking for the principal square root, or basically we're looking for a non-negative answer. And so there can't be any values of w that make this true. Now, there is a solution to the equation when we have the opposite of this square root, and that's what we're gonna find for our extraneous solution. Since when we square both sides, we would end up with that same equation on either side, regardless of if this is positive or if it's negative. So that's our first step. We just wanna square each side of this equation and try to find that extraneous solution. And so squaring a square root, they cancel each other out. So we get one half W plus eight and minus two squared, the negatives will cancel out and we'll get a positive four. And now we just need to solve this linear equation. So let's subtract four on each side. So one half W is negative four and multiply each side by two. So that W is negative eight. So this is our proposed solution, but we already know it's not gonna make sense, but let's check it anyways. Since that's the whole idea with these extraneous solutions is that you need to check your work so that you can figure out which of these solutions that we find don't actually make sense. And so plugging it back in, we get the square root of one half times by negative eight now and then we'll add eight to that, and this should be equal to negative two, or in fact, we'll find that it won't be equal to negative two. So on the left-hand side, minus eight divided by two is negative four, and then we add eight to that, so we get the square root of four on the left-hand side, and the square root of four is two, and so two we know is not equal to negative two. So this doesn't make sense, which means that this is an extraneous solution. Now, like I mentioned, what we did find, this negative eight, this solves the equation when we have a negative sign in front of the square root here. Since notice, if you plug in that negative, now everything makes sense. Minus two would be equal to minus two. So for this problem, what extraneous solution does Ernesto obtain? Well, W would be negative eight is extraneous here. And let's keep going. So in this next one, let me scroll back over a little bit. We have that Elena is solving the following equation for x. We have that the cube root of 3x minus 5 plus 2 equals 7. And the steps to solve this are very similar to solving a square root equation. Notice we solve it for the cube root term or the radical term if we want to be general. And once you solve it for that radical term, you want to cancel out whatever root you're taking. And since you're taking a cubed root here, you want to cube each side to cancel that out. Since the cubed root of something cubed is equal to whatever is on the inside of that cubed root. So cubed roots and cubes cancel. And you have to do that to both sides. So 5 cubed, we get 125. And then you can solve this linear equation. Add 5, divide by 3, and you would get x is... 130 over 3. However, our question here is not to find that x value. It's just wondering, is it necessary for Elena to check if her answers are extraneous? And the answer to this question is no. And that's because cubing or taking cube roots, those are reversible operations. So if you're dealing with a radical that has an odd power, you don't have to worry about these extraneous solutions. And let's take a closer look at that. So if a is equal to b, then it is true that a to the third power, if we cube both sides, would be equal to b to the third power. And we can see that if we reverse this. So now if we start with a cubed is equal to b cubed, then it is always true that a would be equal to b. And so to make further sense of that, let's look at a simple example. So if we start with the cube root of x is equal to negative one, 
And we try to solve this. So we'll cube each side of this equation. And cubing a cubed root, they'll cancel out. And so we'll just get x. And over here, you get minus 1 multiplied 3 times. So two of those negatives will cancel. But there will be one left over. That makes the overall answer negative. And 1 times itself, however many times you want, is still equal to 1. So this does equal negative 1. And if we plug this value back in to check our work, we have the cubed root of negative 1 is equal to negative 1. But this does make sense. Since you're asking which number multiplied by itself three times would give you negative 1. And we know that if we multiply negative 1 three times, we do in fact get negative 1. Since, like I mentioned, two of them pair up and become positive 1, and then positive 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So checking this, this actually does make sense. But remember from the introduction to this topic that if we were squaring a square root here and we went through this process and plug it back in, it doesn't make sense. So it's only when we raise it to some odd power that it is reversible. So we can write that down that this is a reversible operation. Another way to express this is that we call these if and only if statements, meaning that if you write it one way, if a equals b, then a cubed equals b cubed. And then if you reverse it and it's still true, that is what we call an if and only if. So after reversing this, if starting with the cubes, then it's still true that a is equal to b. And since both of these statements make sense when we use different examples, we know this is reversible and that this is if and only if. And going back to our question here, do we even need to check if we have extraneous solutions? The answer is no, and that's because this is reversible. So if you see a problem like this, you only need to check if you have to raise it to some even power to solve the equation. Or in other words, if your radical here, if this is some even root, like the fourth root, the second root, or maybe the twelfth root, then you do have to check for these solutions. But if it's the cubed root, the fifth root, the seventh root, and so on, you don't need to check for those extraneous solutions, or you won't find extraneous solutions. Now, since it is an equation, I still encourage you to check, even if you're not expecting to find those solutions, and that's just to double check that your algebra was correct. But if you assume that your algebra is correct, then you wouldn't need to check for these solutions.